when I was a little girl, my mother told me the most important thing was to grow up and fall in love, get married. Hey, buddy. Are you coming to see me? I'm so happy to see you. Hey, you guys, I, I brought a picnic. I I've got some nice cold potato salad and some fried chicken. Uh-oh, I shouldn't have said chicken. I'm sorry. Well, I've got some bologna sandwiches. Okay, well, maybe I shouldn't have said that either. You like cows? I like cows. Uh, so, unfortunately, we are in lockdown right now. Um, we're closed up. Normally, this would be not a problem, but due to the events of last night and the curfew... Paper kites carrying dynamite We are in full bloom under the moon I am so happy to see you today. Thank you so much for coming back and seeing me and Desi. You know, I'm not even going to say I hope you had a good week because I know you probably didn't. You know, when you hurt, I hurt and vice versa because I know we've been together a long time on this channel and we take care of each other. So today, I want to share with you, you know, six or seven really fantastic ideas and tools to help us live with anxiety, uncertainty, stress, anger, some sleep problems, <laughs> exercise. I mean, I'm kind of hitting everything here. And I may not be a doctor, but you know, I'm a woman in America. I'm 65. I live alone. And if you can relate to any of those things, Please stay with me the next 15 minutes and let's, let's talk about some tools that will help us lead a happier life. You want to do that? Okay, let's do this. You know, the first thing that I think is so crucial to our well-being is exercise. And the thing is, when you are over 60, 65, when somebody says exercise, I think we well, sometimes we don't always accept that real well because we hear, oh, you want us to do a 45 minute workout and join a gym. But that isn't what I'm talking about. I'm just talking about exercise, getting up and taking a walk and, you know, kind of just forgetting the, uh, the aerobics or whatever, because, you know, when you're feeling a little down or anxious, it takes a lot of energy just to take a shower and brush your teeth. So if we could just start out small and if we could just start out with a walk, a 20 minute walk, maybe a 25 minute walk where you can really get out there and smell the fresh air, see the blue sky. Um, maybe you're with your, your puppy dog or your cat, <laughs> but it, it's just a wonderful way to, to greet the day and what walking does, at least for me, it helps me so much get rid of the fat that is around the middle of my body. In 10 days, I can see such, such a difference in my body when I walk, especially if I walk up hills. Oh my gosh, I can't believe what that does for my figure. It's just the difference in my mental health of just getting away from everything and being outside, you know. I mean, we're opened up, we're opened back up in Michigan and that's fine so I can resume my schedule, but I am still gonna walk. This is one of my favorite trails that I take with Desi. We have such a good time. It's, it just really helps me relax. It, it helps me feel grounded. You know, I 
watched so many lectures and read so many articles on stress and anxiety and depression. And the one thing that they all were talking about is get yourself on a routine. And of course, that's terribly difficult, you know, in the circumstances we found ourselves in this year where we were locked down. So what was the rush? We couldn't, we couldn't go anywhere except to maybe the grocery store. So what was the rush? So what happened to our routine? Well, my routine, forget about it. You know, I mean, I would say to myself some days, you know, well, I'm probably not going to see another person today. So why should I put on makeup and fix my hair? Well, anyway, bad news. That was bad news for me. And I sunk into such a little depression there. And I realized, oh my gosh, I got to get myself on a routine. And doing nothing was a full-time job. And I wanted to do well at it. So I had to stop staying up all night and reading stuff on the internet and editing and doing what I needed to do. And I had to get on a schedule. So I, and I did it in increments. But I just said to myself, look at every single morning, you have to be in that shower by 10 a.m. Now that's not early, right? But to somebody who feels a lot of anxiety and stress, 10 a.m. is like, well, I just got to bed at six. I mean, you know what I'm saying? The routine of actually penciling in what I'm gonna do that day, even if it's a bunch of nothing. Even it's like, okay, at 2, at 2 p.m. I'm going to clean a drawer. At, at 4 p.m. I'm going to take tea. I mean, <laughs> I know that sounds silly, but I got a little uh, planner and I planned my day. And pretty soon the day that I called my nothing day became, became an important day. And I've always said, since I, had, since I had this channel, I have always said, not every day is a good day, but every day is an important day. And I had to keep saying that to myself these last few months, because there were a lot of days that didn't feel so good, but they were important days. And I swear, I'm a better person for it. So that just might be something that you think about. Get a routine, get a planner and make a routine. And, and see, see if that, that structure in your life makes a difference. Because the more we can feel in control of our lives, the happier we are. Hey buddy, you wanna talk about things that help you relax? I think it's a really good subject. Am I making you nervous? I don't mean to. You know, the next thing I wanted to bring up was how important sleep is to us, and we all know that, but it, it, it's like, well, how do we do it? You know, when you're dealing with stress and anxiety, it's very difficult to, to get yourself in, in, in bed and, and asleep on time. So what I have found that has helped me so much is to make sure that I increase my exercise so my body is a little bit worn out so at night I'm more tired. So on days that I don't exercise or walk, I do have trouble with my sleep. So that's a huge thing for me. The other thing I was seeing in some of the lectures the doctors were giving about sleep is they said, find yourself a gimmick. Uh, get yourself, um, you know, a sleep tool. And I do have a sleep tool. This is something I've showed you before. Um, this is by uh, Sound Technologies. And this is a little machine. And this plays me. Before. Can you hear that? That's white noise. And then I, I have a lot of different options. I can, you know, hear the ocean. Uh, I can hear pink noise. I have all kinds of things I can listen to. But it's and it's funny, just listening to that makes me want to go to sleep. But that's what I'm used to now. When I turn my little machine on, I, I just go to sleep. I'm having a hard time talking because I heard that. Isn't that amazing? Anyway, uh, this also is a Bluetooth, so I can play my music through this. I just, I wanted you to know this is not... A sponsored video. This is just something that I absolutely love that I keep in my purse if I travel. But you know, anything can be anything can be a gimmick to help you sleep. 
if it's your favorite coffee mug with hot chocolate in it or you know if, if it's absolutely you know getting a, getting a book that has all your favorite paintings in it so you just browse through it at night or a good book anything but it's just so you get into that routine of sleeping hey I've missed you guys where are you going I've got a uh, ten dollars Cole's cash we could all go shopping for like shorts and stuff believe it but there are so many doctors that give lectures on anger and depression and anxiety and how they all dovetail together and I, I had no idea and it, and it was so interesting how people who suffer from depression the root cause of that is usually repressed anger you know everybody in their life experiences anger it's it's just what, what we do with it. That anger can come from many different areas, but usually it's some form of hurt or rejection that we feel. So we turn it into anger. But in our society, a woman being angry isn't accepted. If, if a woman shows anger, she's a bitch. She's off the rails. She's hysterical. So, so we hold it in. I don't think we consciously do that. I just think that that was, in our generation, that's how things were. You know, the, the more a woman shows strength and perhaps anger, the more polarizing she becomes. It's just like, you know, with men, they're not allowed to cry. Women aren't allowed to be angry. Well, what does that do to us? That, that means we stuff it all inside. And then that causes us tremendous problems with depression. We can't sleep. We eat too much. We don't get out of bed. We do things that normally we wouldn't do just to get away from the pain. You know, maybe we gamble or maybe we drink too much. Maybe we ha have liaisons with strange, handsome French men. <laughs> I digress. I no longer can afford for my mental health and for my physical health. I can't afford to be stuffing down my hurt or my anger just to end up depressed. So I made a vow that if I'm with friends and they say something that hurts me, I'm going to tell them. I'm not going to repress it. I'm going to tell them. If somebody cuts in line in front of me, I'm going to call them out on it. And I'm going to say, hey, what are you doing? And maybe I won't be so nice. I'll probably be nice. You know, I'm happy times have changed. I worked so hard to become an independent woman. I think as women, no matter what our age, when we feel helpless, we make very poor decisions and it hurts us. When I was a little girl, my mother told me the most important thing was to grow up and fall in love, get married, and always put your husband first. Never worry about yourself. I think it's powerful when a woman feels that she's not dependent on one person or one thing for her survival. The next thing I wanted to talk about is movie therapy and it's all the rage for treating anxiety and depression uh, and, and some types of loneliness and you make an appointment once or twice a week and you make a commitment that you are going to sit down and watch your favorite comedy movie and you know hopefully you have 20 30 40 movies that you love uh, you probably know you know half the jokes in the movie and maybe uh, there are movies comedies you haven't seen yet so uh, you can order them you know perhaps on Netflix but anything that is going to occupy you for a couple hours and make you laugh and when we laugh, that just releases so many wonderful things, hormones in our body that keep us happy. And for me, it not only makes me happy, but it also allows me to take things less seriously and I can kind of laugh at myself a little bit easier. And I do think that I am pretty funny. <laughs> I'm such a drama queen. One of the last things I wanted to mention 
is what contributes sometimes to our anxiety is the way we talk to ourselves. And doctors recommend that we monitor how we talk to ourselves and if it's abusive that we recognize it and that we stop. And I know that as far as I'm concerned, I, the last few months I saw it pick up. And I think it's because I didn't know what was going on in the world. I, w I was a little frightened and I didn't know how to deal with that. And I would take it out on myself. I would call myself a fatty. Uh, I, I, would, I would say, well, I'd, I said so many disrespectful things. And they really started to mount up. And I remember one day, this sounds so crazy. I probably shouldn't even tell you, but I will. <laughs> I was in my car and I was driving and I was late. And I became furious at myself for being late. And I started to just say terrible things. Like, this is so you, isn't it? It is, it's just so you to always be a day late and a dollar short. It's like, wow, you know, I wouldn't talk like that to anybody. Why would I talk to myself like that? I felt bad enough. What I decided to do is every single time I insulted myself, I wrote it down. I wrote it down just to see how ugly what I said was. And that has helped me so much. My, my insulting myself for being chubby or be, being stupid or, or whatever. It stopped 100%. We're supposed to be our own best friend. We're supposed to love ourselves. We're not supposed to call ourselves names. So that was a huge turning point for me. I don't know if you've ever experienced anything like that, but if you do say nasty things to yourself, please stop. You know, the last thing I wanted to mention is, is setting a goal and having that goal have something to do with stepping outside the circle of ourselves, of making sure that we're going to have a day where we do something for ourselves, but also there has to be one thing that we do for someone or something else. Peaceful protests stretching across the country on a day full of raw emotions. And a lot of times all I can accomplish in one day is, you know, of course a million things for me, you know, cleaning, editing, filming. Something for Desi, my family. But doing something that takes me out of my comfort zone or, or out of my world, I think that's so important. Whether that, that's getting out, making a new friend, volunteering, saying hi to a neighbor, <laughs> making sure they're okay. Just something. Something that, that I do that has no gain for me just paying it forward something wonderful what are you doing he's gonna get me you're gonna get me i thought maybe today we could like go to the mall no okay <laughs> hey everybody thank you so much for spending this time with us today we loved every minute of it have yourself a, a good safe brand new week and when you're done with your week you come back and see us, okay? All right, it's a deal. We'll be here.